Um, teacher guidelines, that's just ripped off, Ray, thanks. Um, student actions and consequences are still being determined. We've been throwing up ideas about Saturday detentions, um, a whole heap of new things, but we've only just had a principal for this term, so we're not really sure um, about who's going to implement what at the moment. We haven't had much of a leadership team this year. So um, the consequences are obviously going to involve a support group. Um, we've got a good welfare team at the school that will be involved. Parents will be involved for chronic recurring behaviours, day detention, suspensions. Having a, uh, a restorative theme to them in involving community service, identifying students in need of individual learning plans and aim to re-engage the student into the college community. And we will be collecting data on the staff and the students and the reasons and the times and all of that stuff. So hopefully we'll have a bit more next year once we've implemented it. Now, just before I finish off, I want to tell you a little bit of a story. I teach revolutionary history at year 12 and I start <laughs> off the year with the French Revolution and we talk about why people behave in the way they do. And one of the big problems we have is that, you know, the ideals of the revolution were that people would behave in good ways because they knew it was the right thing to do. And almost all of my year 12 students still believe that people need to be forced to behave appropriately. So my dream is that we change that culture, that there's an acceptance that we all behave appropriately because we understand we have communal responsibility and we understand that it is the right thing to do and we don't need to be forced into doing it. Maybe that's a bit pie in the sky, maybe it's a bit, but hopefully, you know, five years down the track, at the end, you know, when I start the French Revolution, I'll get a different answer from my students. So where we're at at the moment is changing culture. And if we look at these sort of six steps for change, we have a plan for change from a solid base. We know and we understand that we need to change. Two, people know in their heart of hearts that there are discrepancies. Part of the problem is equipping everyone with the tools to be able to do it effectively. Um, baby steps, number three. Modelling is most important. You're always stuck when you're trying to achieve change in a school. A lot of the time I want to believe Richard Elmore and I want to say, if it's worth doing, everybody should be made to do it. But the reality is that people need to feel that they're part of that process, and that's where we're going now. You know, all this information is coming up for discussion, all the policies, so that's where we're working at the moment. So we're selecting the models, we're trying to build support, and then obviously the naysayers and the arm crosses and the eye rollers in the back of the head um, will have to deal with when that happens. Okay, thank you. I was going to say, and I'll say it now, most PD has no long-term effect unless people are forced. Uh, and they're forced often by changing the, the assessment. If you change the assessment, you'll change the way teachers teach. Bring in that plan and people are going to teach to the test. In other words, you can, and there's, I'm not making up new stuff. This has been documented in England and America. And it's been debated for years. So this is really the crunch, the, the crunch issue. Because I've, knowing that school, I'd say you've got probably fewer eye rollers and others <coughs> than most. Uh, so you've got most, most of these staff with goodwill who are aligned intellectually and emotionally, but they're not doing it. And that's everywhere I go. I just did two schools for eight, eight schools for two years. My data are fascinating almost a little bit of change in the first year, maintained in the second. That's it. So now the big question is going to be, which is why I'm here really, I'm interested as you are and I'm not an expert in, in, in innovation. How do you embed an innovation? That's the real key. And that's where you're going to come in. It's going to be easy in primary, first of all because you get watched by others pretty well all the time in primary, it's just natural. Um, so you're going to be more conscious of other issues than just being locked in your room. So I don't know. I, don't know. I'm, I want to come back to it at the end, but I think it's a really, really important question. 